On behalf of the Student Nurses Association, we welcome you to this celebration.
President Call, Vice President Steele, Vice President Hartigan, Vice President Zenz, Department Chairs, Distinguished Faculty, Alumni, Family and Friends, but most of all, the graduating class of Spring 2011. Soriano, Queensborough Vocal Students.
the audience please be seated. Congratulated on your accomplishments. And each of you has an incredible story to be told. And it's been shared by many faculty and friends who supported you through, I'm sure they couldn't even imagine, the difficult times that you faced, but you forged ahead. Community colleges represent access to higher education, those opportunities. And many, many students, including these students, chose the community college, chose Queensboro to realize their dream of a better life. We didn't make it very easy on these students. Our nursing program is our most demanding. Of the hundreds and hundreds of students who come to us each year, what you see are the survivors. <laughs> I have great respect for those in the nursing profession. I admire your incredible strength that somehow you've managed to retain your humanity through all of the things that you study, that you learn, that you accomplish as nurses. And that's an incredible balance, that objectivity, the empathy, and I suspect that you will be outstanding in carrying out the ideals of your profession as you go forward. I admire each and every one of you for your individual journeys and for making Queensboro such an extraordinary community of students with faculty and staff. Certainly diversity is a hallmark of our institution. And as you can see from our graduating nursing class, you certainly represent that. Coming from all over the United States, Africa, Asia, Southeast Asia, India, Pakistan, Europe, Caribbean and Atlantic Islands, as well as Central and South America. It is a joy, it is a joy to be here, and I know that you have found uh, your way here to make incredible friendships. I have to also congratulate the men. wonderful thing and I'm very proud of the fact that our graduating classes of the last several years represent such a high percentage of male nurses. Actually almost twice the national average. So I think that's that's a wonderful tribute to our faculty and certainly to those of you who've managed to be so successful in our nursing program. So in addition to being very diverse from your backgrounds, you were very diverse in how you got here. And some of you came from high school and some came from your professions. We have people who used to be in the film production uh, or the music industry. Uh, certainly people who have created families and come back to school after a period of time. And it's very interesting because as different as you all were, you forged this incredible cohort group. And I know you mean a great deal to one another as you do obviously to us. You certainly have all shared determination that no matter what, you're going to find and reach your goals. You've persisted despite all the obstacles. You've heard that over and over again. You've lived it. You've made significant personal sacrifices. And I hope all of you know just how much they did sacrifice. And it's really been worth it because you've demonstrated great academic success. But the numbers are not important when it comes to nursing. It's really your effectiveness as a member of that profession. 
Now you've learned theories and you've applied them and you've developed obviously a very strong sense of personal values. And that was through the work of your faculty who are extraordinary, as you know. So all of you came to know that you make a difference in people's lives and that's very, very important. And now that you've experienced this first stage of your professional growth, you're going to go on because that's, that's the tradition of your profession going on. And when you do, you can't forget us, Queensboro. We're still your family no matter what. But you also need to remember a couple things for yourself. Do, do remain curious. Never give up that thought, that questioning. It's very, very important. Do maintain your friendships. Work at them. They're very important. Take time for yourself and take care of yourself first. Sounds strange, but it's very important. And do always think of us. And always know you're welcome back here. And I do expect to see some of you here back as professors. Don't forget, many of our faculty began where you began. So I'm sure they share with me the great joy in saying congratulations. And again, to the families and friends, you've made a great investment with all the help you've given these students who are now graduates. Congratulations. to introduce to you the chairperson of the nursing department, Professor Anne-Marie Menendez. Good afternoon and congratulations graduates. How wonderful it must feel to celebrate after all the hard work and sacrifices you have made to get to this point. I know many of you have juggled family responsibilities and work, many even full time. We applaud you for your determination and fortitude. We often speak in education of the opportunity to change lives through teaching. As educators, we believe we can influence our students through books, reading, writing, and reflection. We utilize the latest technology to augment our lessons. We incorporate service learning to address local needs while developing academic skills and fostering a commitment to the community. All this to mold you into the nurse who will meet the needs of patients and families in a highly complex healthcare arena. But as you leave Queensboro, one of your most important teachers has yet to present themselves. That is your future patients. Indeed, your patients will teach you many valuable lessons and will inform who you are and who, more honestly, you will become. You will care for people when they enter the world and notice that although their entrances are similar, their paths can be quite different. You will care for patients who recover health and those that do not. You will notice the choices they have made and how they respond to their health challenges. You will see patients suffer both physically and mentally and wonder how some are so very strong and others need much support and encouragement. And you will see people at the end of life and listen as they review their past and long for the future. You will hear of their accomplishments and failures. You will notice who is at the bedside of your patients and who is not. You will be privy to their deepest fears and biggest regrets. You will share their most joyful moments. When I look back on my patients, I notice how their stories have influenced my story. I notice how I have become more patient, more hopeful, more grateful. I have shared their stories to teach you lessons. Now you will hear your own stories and create your own lessons. There is a saying that when the student is ready, the teacher presents themselves. As you begin your practice of nursing, my wish for you is that your teachers are many, your lessons are meaningful, and that you are ready. I wish you the best, class. Congratulations. to introduce my colleague, Professor Janice Malloy of the Nursing Department, who will give the congratulations today. 
You guys look great. <laughs> really, really great. Good afternoon, everybody. President Paul, Vice President Steele, Vice President Hardigan, Vice President Sins, distinguished faculty, family, and friends. My sincere congratulations to the graduating class of spring 2011. I am personally proud of each and every one of you. As you proceed on with your nursing career, there will be many moments where the climb will be steep, but you will get there. Here are a few suggestions as how to nurture yourself along the way. A, accept yourself. B, believe in what you do. C, cardiac output. <laughs> Where is it right now? Where is it? Up, oh, good. D, discover something new every day. E, empower yourself to always do the right thing. F, face your fears, they will go away. G, give generously. H, honor this noble profession you have entered. I, indulge, you deserve it. J, journal often. K, keep thinking, bachelors, and continuing education. L, laugh out loud. M, maintain your wellness. The patients need you. N, nurture your spirit of kindness. O, open your heart. P, pray often for yourself as well as your patients. Q, quiet your mind, especially after a difficult day. R, Rubicon. <laughs> you have certainly crossed it at this moment in time. S, smile at your patients. They're as nervous as you are. T, trust yourself. U, use your gifts and talents well. V, vent your emotions. W, work hard, play hard. X, accentuate your positive. Why? Yes to overtime. <laughs> Z, zest. Bring it with you each day you go to work. This is your time. Go forward and help your fellow human beings by making a difference and remember the words of Rosie the Riveter. Remember her? We had her in lecture. Here she is. You can do it. Thank you, Thomas. Now will we will begin our traditional candle lighting ceremony. As all the lights in the auditorium will be dim, we ask that you remain in your seats. We ask, also ask that you hold your applause until all the names have been called. We'll give you ample time to cheer them. The graduates have chosen Audrey Moroni and Barbara Caravanas from the nursing department to light their candles. The lights will be dimmed. Andre Ekaveri. 
Hong San and Charles.
Elizabeth Acosta Reyes.
Graduates, please extinguish your candles. to our candle lighting. On behalf of all of us up here, I'd like to say thank you to Queensborough's Interim President, Dr. Diane Call. Thank you for your lovely words. Uh, I'd like to say thank you to Nursing Chairperson Ann Marie Menendez, Vice President for Student Affairs, Ellen Hardigan, Vice President of Academic Affairs, Dr. Karen Seal, and Vice President Zins, he's also here. Thank you so much for coming. Hats off to our esteemed faculty, there aren't enough words to say uh, our, how, how to express our gratitude for what you've given to us and the amazing staff in the nursing department as well. We all owe thanks to our family and friends gathered here to our mothers and fathers, husbands, wives, partners, significant others, boyfriends, girlfriends, brothers, sisters, sons, daughters, stepmoms, stepdads, grandparents, sisters-in-laws, brothers-in-laws, aunts, uncles, cousins. Are you getting the picture? It takes a village and a half to get someone to nursing school. I mean, thank you so much for your support. Uh, we'd also like to thank Colleen Wharton and Julius Baltanato, who are next semester Student Nurses Association President and Vice President, and all the volunteer students who are here today uh, making this event run so smoothly. Really appreciate your, your help. And uh, I'd also like to thank Pasquale and Kathy and Trish just for being such a great team this semester. I also want to extend a special thanks to all the professors in the departments from our prerequisite sequence, the English department, social sciences, and especially biology. I think A and P, anatomy and physiology, was a proving ground for all of us. I think we began to see ourselves as scientists and realize how far we could stretch our brains, how much we could learn, and how much pressure we could withstand. Remember those A and P practical exams? I thought my occipital lobe was just going to bust right out of my lambdoidal suture. <laughs> oh, my trapezius. Another big thank you goes out to a very important group of people who are not here today, and those are our patients. Collectively, we have cared for hundreds of patients over the past two years, and they have taught us so much, and they have helped to bring us to this great day. Some we met in their very first moment of life during our OB rotation. We'll never forget those original faces. Some were very sick, and some we got to see improve and regain their best function and health. And some are no longer with us. We met them and cared for them at the end of life. To be a nursing student in these moments is a privilege. We had the gift of time, the luxury of time to focus and care for maybe just one or two patients. And I know that we are all so grateful for all that they taught us. Nursing school here at QCC is such a life-changing and intellectually challenging experience. It is so transformative. It's like you go through those stages of grief described by Elizabeth Kubler-Ross. You're probably familiar with them. Denial, anger, bargaining, etc. You've heard them. You get your acceptance letter and you start out in Nursing 101, and you're totally in the denial stage. I can handle this. I got an A in A&P. I can do nursing school, keep working, keep my social life. Ha! Ah, denial. In 102, the anger hits. I got a what on that exam? I studied for 11 straight days. I know that question 35 was key wrong. It had to be. I am going to speak to Professor <laughs> Anger is followed almost immediately by bargaining. Please, God. Dear God. Let, let me just get a 78. Well, better really an 80. 
on the next exam, and I promise, I swear, next time I will read all 1,278 assigned pages on fluid and electrolytes. In 201, the depression sets in. I have no clean clothes. There's an 18-inch dust bunny living under my sofa. What's wrong with me? Why do I have to keep looking up this thrombocytopenia over and over and over again? And in 202, we come to acceptance. I can do this. I do know what I'm doing. I am a nurse. Suddenly, our professors are looking at us a little differently and smiling. We have, as Professor Malloy famously told us once in lecture, crossed the Rubicon. We made it. There are a lot of phrases spoken by professors that stick in our minds here. Don't think we weren't listening. Like crossing the Rubicon or ding, ding, ding. <laughs> or this semester in 204, when we were discussing some of the obstacles and stresses that nurses face in the workplace, Dr. Campbell told us that when dealing with difficult coworkers, don't let anyone steal your peace. That's a keeper. But there's one phrase for me that seemed so simple when I first heard it, yet it has come to symbolize a kind of eternal flame, an ideal that we can carry as we go forward and encounter all that we will encounter as nurses. I remember sitting in 101 lectures. Yes, back in the denial stage, you remember 101? You'd sit there frantically taking notes, slightly baffled. What are we talking about? This is nursing? What's gonna be on the test? And inevitably, a difficult topic would come up. Someone might bring in a personal experience as a counterpoint. And we'd get into some lively debate. Professor Soto was very good at trying to make us see all sides of an issue. And it would just reach a point where she would say, keep an open mind. With that mysterious smile of hers, the way she said keep an open mind was like Obi-Wan Kenobi, use the force. <laughs> and I heard her and I thought, I've got an open mind. That won't be a problem for me. And off I went to my first clinical day of 101 at the long-term care and rehabilitation facility. I thought I was prepared psychologically. I thought whatever I'd have to do that day for my patient, I would just imagine that I was doing it for my, one of my grandparents who I adore. I would do anything for them. Then Professor Meehan gave us our patient assignments and my patient turned out to be my age and paralyzed from the waist down. And she had a child the same age as my youngest son. And I distinctly heard Professor Soto's voice in my head saying, keep an open mind. And I thought, oh, she didn't just mean keep an open mind, be tolerant, be non-judgmental. She meant keep an open mind about everything. Don't make any assumptions about what you will walk into when you work as a nurse. Keeping an open mind in that kind of way isn't actually that easy. It takes some real self-development. And that's been one of the greatest gifts that this program, that this education has given to us. Nursing demands self-development. To be a good nurse, we must be continually self-developing. And that means continuing our education, staying on top of new technologies and new developments, but it also means growing as human beings, not stagnating in stale attitudes or habits, keeping an open and fresh mind. Because it is only with an open and fresh mind that we can approach our patients and give the very best care because of all the ways that we can save lives as nurses, of all the assessments, interventions, maneuvers, technologies we can apply to a suffering human being, the most powerful is when we share our own humanity. And to do so, we must be present in each encounter with our minds open and our hands clean. Wash your hands. <laughs> this has been an awesome class. For whatever reason, that our destinies brought all of us here together on this road. I really am just honored to have served as your president to this very intelligent and committed class. We're a very passionate group of students. We're very passionate about making sure that our patients are treated properly. Let's go from this day forward and keep our passion, keep our minds open. Let's get out there and forge the future of nursing and hold tight to the ideals that our professors worked so hard to instill in us. The world is ever changing. Healthcare in the United States is in a mess and desperately needs change. And we can and will be a huge part of that. Away we go. Thank you.
graduates have chosen the following professors of nursing to present the pins. Dr. Barbara Campbell, Professor D. Weber, Professor Regina Cardesi, Professor Eileen Tipman. Graduates, please rise.
joy for providing the music. And to both Mark and John, who um, helped us through this whole ceremony and re two rehearsals to make sure that it was absolutely perfect. Please join us for refreshments. We'll be served outside in the plaza. One more big round of applause.